The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to Forethought Activities. I am Paige Parker and I'll be your presenter this afternoon and we also have Shanna James on with us. Shanna is going to be answering questions and piping in with tidbits as needed. So um, feel free as we go through to put questions in the question window that's part of your GoToMeeting control panel bar. You'll see a place to add your questions in and Shannon will be answering those as we go through. We might pause for some questions at, at certain times if we feel like we've got a backup or a bunch of questions on the same topic. Um, so just feel free to let us know what you're wanting to know as we go through the web webinar this afternoon. So I talked about putting questions in the question window. Our agenda for today will be talking about the different ways that you can enter activities into your Forethought Planner. So we'll be talking about what teachers can do with activities. We'll be talking what, about what curriculum people can do with activities and how you can be part of that process and then how those activities can be used in the planner. So using activities is another way to sort and keep track of the things that you're storing in your Forethought Planner. Before we jump into, where did, there it is, I lost my, my help screen. Before we jump into the program itself, I just want to tell you that everything that we're talking about today is available in help. Um, we have articles out there about using the activities with screenshots and videos, and also this webinar will be posted in our help section. So you can always get to our online help by going to eduphoria.zendesk.com, or if you're already in the program, you can click in the upper right-hand corner. There'll be a help button, even on the main um login window where you see the list of all your applications, there's a help button in the upper right hand corner. If you happen to be in Strive, the help is on the left hand side and it's a question mark, but from anywhere in our program you can get to our online help and be able to see those resources that are out there. So when you go to Zendesk and you go to online help, oops, I didn't realize I was logged in, sorry. This is what you will see when you go to the online help section and just scroll down to forethought and you will see in the teacher section there is an article called the my activities tab and it's going to go over the things that we talk about today and there's a video that goes with it and also under the curriculum section there's a, a place in here where you can learn about managing activities. So after we're done for today and you want to find more information, that's where you can find it. Also in our online help under training and webinars, this is where we will post the webinar. It'll be under Forethought Webinars there, so the video will be posted after the fact. If you have someone that you think could benefit from it, you can show them where to find it there. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to jump in to Forethought, and I'm logged in now as a teacher because we're going to start with what the teachers can do, and I'll go into Forethought, and on today's lesson planner, I have a lesson plan here for my English 1 class, and I wrote my lesson plan, I included all of my TEKS, I included my checklists, I even have some attachments down at the bottom of that lesson so I have resources that are tied to this lesson and when I taught it today in class it worked really well the kids got a lot out of it and I have decided that this is an activity that I think I want to teach again I want to hang on to this one and there are lots of ways that I can do that um, I can send this lesson plan to another date in the future and say I'm going to teach it next year I could go put it out there now but I don't know yet when I'm going to want to teach it so um, there's another way that I can save this lesson and reuse this lesson, and that's by using it, saving it as an activity. So I'm going to click on the course bar so that I get my course tools, and one of those tools is this little gear. And I'm going to zoom in. I have to zoom back out in a minute because I can't see my whole screen, but I wanted you to be able to see that little icon that looks like a gear, and it has a plus sign. And 
in all of our Edgeforia products, we have what we call tool tips. So if you aren't sure what a tool does, you can float your mouse over it and it will pop up a little text box like that box that says add this lesson to my activities tells you what that button does. So if I don't know what the wrench does, it'll tell me that that's more lesson options. If I don't know what the little, it tells me that's to send my lesson. So I can use my tooltip, or if I just remember that the gear is the symbol for the activities, that's what I want to do. I want to save this lesson plan as an activity so that I can reuse it in the future. So I'm going to click on that button, and this is an important part. You have to get this pop-up in order for it to save, and so usually when I get questions about you know, my activities aren't working, I can't save activities, it's because they have pop-up blockers turned on in either the browser or in the operating system. And that's not part of Edgeforia, that's something you probably need to talk to your technology people about and find out how to turn off the pop-ups in the browser that you're using. But if you don't see this pop-up window, it's not going to work. So I want to make sure that I click on the icon and then I'm going to click on OK and say, yes, I want to put it in my activities. So I do that and it doesn't look like anything happened. I said OK, but my screen looks exactly the same. What it has done, though, is put a copy of this lesson plan in the My Activities tab. So if I go over to the left, your teachers probably spend the majority of their time on the My Planner tab, but if I click on My Activities, I will see that there's an activity in there for English 1. And when I click on that activity for English 1, this is the lesson that I taught today that I decided I wanted to save as an activity and be able to reuse. And you'll notice that it brought in all of the standards that I had attached to it. It brought in my attachments down at the bottom so everything's there for me to reuse as part of this lesson when I decide to use it in the future. The default name for all of your activities is going to be activity 4 and then the course that this lesson belongs to. So this course is tied to my English 1 standards so it says activity for English 1. I want to change that because everything that I save for English 1 is going to have that same name. So I'm going to come up to the top and change the name of that activity. And I'm going to call it E1 because it is my English 1 course. And then I'm going to put um, dramatic structure because that's my topic. Or I could put Harrison Bergeron because that's the name of the story that I'm using. But whatever I want to use as my title, I'll put up there. The reason I want to put E1 or something like it, I want to have some kind of naming convention, is that this is going to be one big list of activities. There is not a way to create folders for your different courses or for different topics or anything like that. So I want to have an, a naming convention that includes, that will sort things or, or clump them together by that starting piece. I could come in and say it's English 1 and it is short stories dramatic structure. So now it's going to group all of my English 1 short story lessons together as opposed to English 1 grammar lessons or writing lessons or whatever. So I want to have some sort of naming convention there that will help them sort over on the side and then I'm going to click my save button. I'm going to refresh really quickly just so that you'll be able to see that the naming convention changed. So there it is over on the left now, E1SS Dramatic Structure. And if I had several that were E1, they would be grouped together and then all my E2s would be grouped together based on that naming convention since we don't have a way to do folders. So that's just a, a little suggestion for making it easier to find stuff in your activities list once you're done. Once I have saved it, it's ready for me to use. I can reuse that lesson anytime I want to. And it's going to be based on my primary teak. So whatever this top teak is that is set as my primary learning standard, that's how I'm going to find it and reuse it in my lesson plans. So I can go back to my planner and I can go to my standards and find that standard and there's the lesson 
that I saved. It shows up under resources as an activity. It tells me that it's my activity so that I, I know that I created it. There's another one out there that I did not create. This one was put out there either by another teacher or maybe by my curriculum facilitators or coordinators, but it's not mine because it doesn't say my activity. So just by saving as an activity, I have made it available to me where I can go in and look at that at any time I want to um, and go back and reuse that lesson if I want to. So really easy to do once my lesson is written from the lesson planner. I just click on that button to add it to my activities and then I will go over to my activities tab. I can click on it here. I can still edit it. If I decide I want to change something, I can. I can give it that new name. I can add things in if I need to in the body of the lesson. And then again, I have my save button. So a lot of times when you're writing lesson plans, you write it as a plan and then you decide, did it work well? Do I want to reuse it? Do I want to keep it? I'll save it as an activity. But there are other times when maybe I attended some professional development and I got a really great idea for a lesson plan and I want to write it down before I forget, even though it's not even about a unit that I'm doing right now. So there is another way that I can create activities besides taking them from a day in my planner. I can go over to the My Activities tab and I can see here any lessons that I have saved already as activities. But if I go down to the bottom of that panel on the left hand side, I can click on create a new activity from here. And when I say I want to create a new activity, it's going to ask me which of my courses currently in my planner, I have English 1 and English 2 as my two preps, so it's going to ask me which course does this belong to. And I'll say this is another English 1 lesson and I'll click create and it generates the activity. Now this new activity looks like a lesson plan. The only difference is when you're in your planner you're going to have a date up here in the upper right hand corner. It's going to tell you what instructional day it is and what date you're putting it into your planner. When you write an activity it doesn't have that because you're not writing it for a specific time. You're writing it to have as part of your bank of lessons that you could use at any time. Again I'm going to want to come up to the top and give it a name. So I would say this is another E1 lesson but this one is going to be maybe uh, grammar, so I'll put a G for grammar. And it's going to be parts of speech. So I learned a cool new way to teach parts of speech and that's what I'm going to do. I would save that lesson and again when I refresh it's going to show up in my list over on the left. And you'll see it, it organized them, it puts all the E1s together, but it's going to sort alphabetically by the next part. So it would put all my G's, all my grammars together, and then all my short stories together. <clears throat> However I did my naming convention, that's how it's going to sort over there for me. From the activity tab, if I'm creating an, an activity here, I can still go in and grab my standards and double click to bring them in just like I did from the lesson planner itself. I can still write my lesson plan and add whatever information I want to put in here. I can still add attachments. So everything that I can do in my lesson planner I can do here creating an activity. The only difference is that when I write it in my planner I'm writing it on a specific date. When I write it in the activities tab I'm writing it as part of my bank of lessons but it's not assigned to a specific date at all. Again, I can save that and when I go into my planner, whenever I get to the point where I'm ready to teach that lesson, I go in and look at 1A. There it is attached to, to 1.1A because that's that was the primary teak that I associated with that lesson. So I can write them in the lesson planner and then save them to activities or write them from the activities tab and then put them in to my planner when I feel like that's an important part or I'm ready to use it. I'm going to go back. Hey. To, yes, ma'am. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I, one quick question. Okay. Um, teeks, uh, the teeks 
um, there was a question that will they be able, you know, will they be there the next year? So can you talk a little bit about how it connects to the peaks and it's always connected to them? Yes, and that is a good question. So um, what is what happens with your teaks is that they're tied to the course. So if you have this lesson, which is tied to this course, those teaks are going to be there. With language arts, which is the example that I use, the teaks are changing in August. New teaks will be in effect. So for this lesson plan, I would need to go in and look at the new teaks and bring them in that um, correspond to what I had this year. But if my teaks were not changing from year to year, then these teaks would still be there when I go to use that lesson next year. They're still associated with that course because the teaks get associated with the course. And when you reuse that lesson in the course, the teaks will still be there. The only time you have to worry about teaks changing is if they change from the state. So, for example, in August, new language arts teaks and new science teaks. Actually, that's not true. I don't think they go into effect until the following year, the 1920 school year. So these TEKS would still be in effect for next year. But it's only when they change from the state that you have to worry about anything changing in your lessons. As long as the TEKS stay the same from year to year in your courses, they will be the same and be there in your lessons, your activities as well. I hope that answered it. Sounded good to me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, if there are other questions, let me know. I am going to talk about one other thing from the teacher's point of view. So as a teacher, I have created a lesson in my lesson planner and saved it as an activity so I can reuse it. And I've created an activity that I can use whenever I feel I need it. I haven't assigned it to a date yet. So I can build those lessons either way from my perspective and once I build them and save them I can use them because we talked about how they show up over there on the right hand side I will be able to see that lesson or that activity showing up for me just by creating it and saving it but there's another thing that teachers can do they can contribute to the overall curriculum of their district by publishing those activities. So when I'm on an activity in my activities tab, I also have a button up here that says publish. And when I float my mouse over it to get that tooltip, it says publish activity to the district tree. Most districts have it set to where it goes through an approval process. Um, that's a district decision, but you can contribute your lessons. If you say, hey, this lesson worked out really well today, and I think all of the English One teachers would benefit from using this lesson, then I can click on that publish button and I can write any comments that I want to. I can say, you know, what I did, how it worked, what my thoughts are about this activity, or I don't have to, but I can put comments in there. And then I'll click the submit button. And when I say that I have submitted that lesson, um, it's going to go in for approval. Let's see, I'm going to continue. And I wanted to show you that the icon changes over here on the right hand side. So when it was just my lesson and it was saved, I have the pencil there that I can edit the lesson and it's really just for me. And that's what the icon is going to look like. But now that I have submitted that lesson, it shows up without the pencil because now it's going up to another level. So that icon is going to change. And by publishing that lesson, if I make it available, and it gets approved by my coordinators, then any teacher who clicks on the TEAK will be able to see that lesson. So that's sort of the, the last part for teachers is that they can publish those lessons and make them available if they get approved to be part of the district tree. Any wrap up questions about what the teachers do? Um. Uh, not necessarily. There was a question about how to remove a teak from your plan or oh, whatever. So. Good question. So let's Can say I accidentally clicked on one and I didn't really mean for this teak to be there. I can right click on it 
and I have the option of removing from activity or setting as primary learning standard. If I remove it from the activity, then it's going to be gone out of that box altogether. And that's true whether you're in the activity or you're just in a daily lesson plan. If you accidentally click on one or you just change your mind and say, you know, I'm really not covering that as in this one, I can right click and remove. I can also, when I'm here in this section, maybe originally I said this was the primary teak, but on second thought, maybe I think this is the primary teak. I can right click and set it as primary learning standard, and it's just going to move it up to the top. And now 1.24a is the one that it will be tied to over here in my resources box. So you can make changes by right clicking on that box and getting those pop ups. And again, that's true in the activities, but also when I come back to my planner, I can right click and I can remove a, t or a standard from the lesson plan there as well. Or um, I could copy the standard text if I wanted to use that text somewhere down in the lesson itself. Yes, cool. Shanna. Um, okay, so I want to throw in some two cents, some things that I learned when I was training in Midland. Oh. Um, so I worked with a, I worked with a really some good group, uh, good, good, good people there in Midland. So if anybody, if you were on, yay for you, I miss coming to see you guys. Um, but um, from the My Activities tab, there was actually a group of teachers that said they use this practice um, to build their bank of lesson plans in the summer. You know, like just getting ready for the year as they're as they're working on things. So they were, they asked, you know, can we proactively use this and build our bank of lessons? And I thought that was really cool because that's a good idea because, um, you know, if Absolutely. you have the extra time and you're working on plans, you can always build them there. Um, and then the other thing they mentioned was the fact that they use this as a sub for like sub plans. So have just a sub plan, just a generic thing in here so that you can drop that in at any time near home because nobody wants to write a, an emergency sub plan when you're at home sick exactly so if you have something in that bank you could like drop that into your lesson planner and one of your team members could pull that up and and share that so absolutely anyway, i thought those were great ideas they are and and you could even label it you know because you could put an, an asterisk or a number at the top to make it go up to the top so that it would be easy to find that throw down or sub lesson plan that you could use. So that's a great idea. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to the curriculum side and talk about what can be done with activities at the curriculum level. So I'm going to go to another login where I'm logged in as an administrator and I'll go into forethought here. And I also have a My Activities tab where as a curriculum writer, I can create things and use them. I can do the same thing that teachers can do on my activities. I can create a new activity right here and then I can use it however I want to. One of the things that I think curriculum writers do most often is adding things to the scope and sequence. So I can go to my scope and sequence tab and I'm going to come over here to high school language arts and I'll go to my English one course and I see all of the stuff that I have in here for English one. I have some unit folders and within those unit folders I have some placeholders here where I can associate some resources with that unit and then I also have the teaks that are associated with that unit. So as a curriculum writer, someone with the, the curriculum administrative role here, I can go in and I can put an activity right in the curriculum wherever I want it to be. So if um, I have a lesson, an activity that I think is a good one for covering a specific standard, so maybe I'm going to talk about um, how the genre with similar themes shapes the meaning. So I have a lesson that goes with that. If I right click, I get two choices. I can add a new activity or I can add a new learning, uh, add a standard clarification. You'll notice that if, when I say add a new activity, it has that same icon that you see in the teacher side for activities. So 
the way I like to think of it is these activities are really lesson plans. This is something I would do with students. So if I'm writing something for my teachers that they will be able to drop into their planner and use as a lesson plan with students, I would want to write it as a, an activity. There are some times when I want to put things into the curriculum that may not be a lesson plan. It may be something that's for the teacher's benefit, information that they need to use. And I would call that a standard clarification, and it has a different icon. So if I look in my Unit 1 resources, I have two things in there, but neither one of them are actual lesson plans. They're not activities because they don't have that that. Um, gear as the icon they have a magnifying glass so this is something that the teachers are going to use to look more closely at what they can do while they're planning so they'll use these to help them plan let me zoom out so you can see this one is web resources and I've just started a collection of websites that might be helpful for teachers with that unit um, other things that I might want to include as a standard clarification, if I go up under my curriculum documents, I have my year at a glance, and it is put in, you'll notice down here it says year at a glance for English 1, it is a standard clarification, it has the magnifying glass, because this is not something I would drop into my planner or use to teach from, this is a resource for me as a teacher. The same is true for my unit overview. When I look here, I have a unit overview um, as a resource down at the bottom. It is a standard clarification because it has the magnifying glass. So this is not something I would put in my lesson planner, but it's information that I would use as a teacher to go through and see what all I need to cover in this unit. Then if I wanted to write a lesson, an intro lesson as an exemplar, I would add it as an activity and now it looks more like that lesson planner I've got my attachments I've got my curriculum over here on the right I can tie all that in together so as a curriculum staff member I can add both the activities again I would right click and say I want to add a new activity and then it would give me that activity that in this case would be tied to the overview but I could tie it to a teak. So I could go in and say, I have a lesson that works really well for this teak. I'm going to right click and add a new activity and put that lesson out there as an exemplar lesson. I always think of, of this for things like science classes where um, they always have lab safety lessons and sometimes those lab safety lessons are already created at the district level. I could just go ahead and add them in here tie them to that lab safety teak, and then the teachers would be able to pop them into their lesson plans and use them as needed. So it's, it's a way that from the top down you can build that bank of lessons or put those things in there. Sometimes you have required or suggested lesson plans because everybody has to cover that same information and that's a good way to put it in there. But from the curriculum level I have the ability to put it in in a lesson plan format which would be the activity or in the standard clarification format, which would be information for the teacher's benefit, not an actual lesson. So that's how I would add things in from the curriculum side. I would go to scope and sequence and I would add it either to one of my placeholders or to a teak, but I would create the activity in the same way and the teachers would be able to use it in the same way. If I'm creating it, in the scope and sequence as a curriculum person then it doesn't go through an approval process because I have the rights to attach it out there and it's automatically going to be part of that resource that I'm adding it to whether I'm adding it to a standard or I'm adding it to one of these placeholders it's going to go there because I'm, I have the right as a curriculum administrator to put it there but hey. yes ma'am I have a question that came in. It's a good question is, can you create a template in activities? Can you create a Oh, I see what you're saying. The template yeah. from the lesson planner does not automatically come into the activities. So um, as a teacher, what I would do is go to my planner. If I was going to write a new activity, I would go to my planner and I would go to tomorrow's date where just my template is there. I haven't written the lesson yet, but the template is there. And I could copy that template and come over to my activities tab and say I want to create a new activity for English 1. 
and then I could paste that template in there. But there, um, there's not a way to make that template come into the new activity because it doesn't know what course that new activity is associated with until you tell it. So you would have, you'd have to paste that template in there. Um, one thing that I have seen districts do is put that template out here in the curriculum so that I could, if my template was, was over here as one of my resources, then I could open it up and copy it in here as I'm building my lesson or my activity. But it doesn't bring that, that template in, the default template, the way the lesson planner does. I would have to copy it in from there. That is a good question, though. Yeah, and I have seen that. I have seen it used that way from the district, um, especially if you have multiple templates for different, different schools. Yeah, that's another way that districts know, get around that one template for right. the whole district thing is they'll put a template, attach it to the curriculum documents for that course, and then I can bring it in wherever I need it. Okay, so both that would apply both to curriculum people creating activities and teachers creating activities they would need to copy that template in as they're building them so very good question I'm glad you brought that up also from the curriculum side I will be in part of that process of approving lessons so if I go to the manage tab when I'm in forethought as a curriculum person I'm gonna have a button here that says approve activities and when I click on approve activities anything did I not click the publish and save I thought I did let me submit my publish let me refresh my Okay, well, I don't know. I must have something disconnected. Let me go into my forethought options and see under activities, they require an administrator for approval, and I am the administrator, so I don't know why it's not showing up. But let me do this. I'll show you my next step, and we'll see if we can make it work this way. You can also assign delegates. So I can go in and say, I'm going to create a new delegate, and I'm going to make my principal a delegate. So I'm going to find him, and I'm going to assign him to English 1. So I'm going to go in and say, English Language Arts, English 1. I'll add that course and I, I could make them delegates for whatever courses that I wanted to then I'm going to select that course and set the rights and when I set the rights I can say this person has the ability to approve activities for this course I might want them to be able to add things to the test bank in aware so I would want them to be able to add item bank questions I might want them to be able to create if I want them to be able to add things to the scope and sequence then I would want them to be able to publish learning standards and create standard clarifications. So those are the options that I have for each course. I could go in and make set those up separately. Okay, so now that I have made him a delegate to approve those, I'm going to log off and log on as that user and go into Forethought and go to my Manage tab, and under Approve Activities, okay, something's broken. I should be seeing that lesson. Let me try one. I'm going to try to publish this one just to see if anything. Okay. I should be seeing an activity Right here I should see English 1 and it should show up with that activity for me to approve. And it's not. Paige. Yes, ma'am. Is, is Albus Dumbledore the approver or would it be admin? Well, I made him a delegate for that course. So oh, that's why he should okay, have. Okay. Because I made him a delegate, he has the rights to approve activities for that course. 
Um, mm -hmm. That's why I'm confused. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, because it's set to English one and he has the rights to approve English one. And so it should be showing up here. Let me do the, the force refresh thing. Well, it didn't do it there. Both, both my administrator and Dumbledore should be able to approve this activity because the administrator is set to have rights and then Dumbledore set to have delegate rights. So I don't know why it got hung up there somehow, but it's not showing up in my course. I should have a, it, it should show up as English one here. Let me do this. Let me log off and go into my 15 site. So this is what it looks like when you have courses to approve. Um, it will show the list of the course and then I would go in and find the lesson that has been submitted and as the administrator I have the ability to publish it to everyone. So the teacher published it and it comes to me for approval. If I click publish then it goes out to every teacher who teaches that course and they will be able to see all of those. So this is what it looks like from the administrative side when I go to publish. Um, I don't know if I'm having an internet hiccup or what the problem is why that one that I just published hasn't shown up yet in the list but this is what it would look like from the administrative side when you go in and you'll see everything that needs to be approved. So right now I have quite a few things sitting out there that need to be approved and I as the administrator have access to all of them but my delegate Dumbledore would only have access to approve these for English one. He wouldn't even see those up at the top because they're not for courses that he's a delegate for. So assigning a delegate is a way to sort of spread the workload out a little bit. If you have um, specific curriculum coordinators or maybe you have facilitators that work with those coordinators and you want to have them have a approval pro rights for that particular course, you can do that by using the delegates. So we talked about the delegate process, we talked about the approval process. Um, are there any questions about that, about the approval process? No. no. Okay. Um, no. Unfortunately, because I can't go in and approve it, I can't show you, but what ends up happening to the icon once the it has been approved and published at the district level is the icon will change again and you'll have an icon that looks like this publish icon. It'll have the green arrow at the top and the red arrow at the bottom that will show that it has been published. So there are three different states or three different icons for the activities that a teacher might see. One that I've written but haven't shared, one that I've sent up to be published, and then once it gets approved it would have this green and red icon on it to show me that it's been been published and it would be over here on in, in my list. Once it's been published I won't have the delete button on it anymore. So right now it hasn't been published yet by my administrator. I could go in and, and take it back or I could go in and delete this lesson. I won't be able to delete a lesson once it's been published because it's associated with my whole district tree. The curriculum coordinator could go in and delete it but I can't delete it from my list. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is using these once once they're in there, what can you do with them? How, how can you use them? So I'm going to go back to my planner and we looked at this just a little bit, um, but I'm going to say, let me go a month in advance. Let's say I want to use a lesson. I'm looking for a way to teach dramatic structure or any of those topics. I can come into my lesson planner and I can come over to the TEKS and I can find 
the lesson that I'm looking for by looking at the teak and looking in my resources tab to see what's out there. I have a lesson plan in here. It's not one that I created. It's one that was published to the tree. So it was either written by another teacher or was written by one of my curriculum coordinators, facilitators, but it was published to the tree at the district level. I know that because it doesn't say my activity beside it. So I didn't initiate it. But if this is what I'm interested in, I can double click on that and I will see that lesson, the standards, the lesson itself and any attachments that are part of that lesson and if I look at it and say yes I think I like that I'm going to use it there's a button right here that says use in plans and I'm going to click on that button and say yes I want to do that and you'll notice let me close this window it put my lesson in there there are the standards and it put the lesson down below. Now, because I had clicked on that day, the template, the blank template is at the top. So I'm just going to want to highlight that and delete it. And there's my lesson that I brought in. So it's as easy as that to bring those lessons in from the teacher's point of view. It comes in with the attachments and with the standards and with all of the pieces that were part of that lesson plan. So that to me is the benefit of having the activities associated. Um, I can find them by looking at a specific teak if I'm struggling and, and I'm not sure. I have trouble covering this every time. I have trouble making the kids understand. Let me see what's out there for me. Anything that's been published will show up under resources. And then if I want to go back and say, you know, I know I did a lesson last year that I really liked. Let me look at my activities. And I will be able to see those activities there and find them by name. And again, once I find them by name, I'm going to look at it and say, oh, yeah, this one's associated with 1.5. And then I know how to go back in and add it to my lesson planner. Any questions? No, um, I'm not seeing any. And... I don't think we have any coming in, so okay. we're good. Doing a good job. That's good. Um, anything that you would like to add, Shanna? Um, no, I think that was good. That um, you've covered everything. Okay. Good information. All right. Well, just one one last reminder that this information will be published in our online help section under Forethought webinars. So we'll have the webinar and the recording out there, but also under the forethought section you will find an article on the activities tab and there's a video there that walks you through the process but also screenshots showing you how to create an activity from a lesson plan how to create an activity from the activities tab and then how to use that activity later on when you want to uh, either share it with your other team members or use it in your lesson plan again. So all of that's out there in the online help section. We thank you for your time this afternoon and if you have any follow-up questions you can email us at training at edgeforia.net and someone will get back with you. Thanks Shanna for taking care of all the questions and we'll see you next time. Great job. From El Paso. Live from El Paso. <laughs> Live from El Paso. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Good. <laughs> Bye.